Uh, we have Magnus Jern with us. He's the CEO and one of the founders of Golden Gecko, uh, which is a mobile application solution provider in Europe and North America. And he's going to be talking about uh, why it might be the case for mobile to be the perfect channel for brands and publishers to present their products, recipes, and experiences. And he's going to be showing some case studies of famous food brands like Barilla or Sainsbury's or American recipes uh, in his experience with Golden Gecko. So thank you, Magnus. Thank you. So this will be all about technology this time. <laughs> <laughs> no philosophy, no. So um, very short about myself. I, I've worked with uh, mobile for the last 10 years. And um, about five years, five, six years ago, I thought I saw this opportunity in mobile applications, primarily because everyone was, the majority of people that owned a mobile phone were playing games on it, usually Tetris, Snake, uh, but they were pre-installed ones. And what we thought was that if we can make, if we can let other people uh, generate these applications, then we won't get too bored as we were at the time, because actually you got quite bored after playing Tetris for a year on your mobile phone, or Snake for that matter. So what we, what we did, we started working with, at the time, there was uh, these simple phones, Java phones. And then uh, that's developed across lots of different platforms with the iPhone launching, with Android, with Blackberry, with iPads, and with Android tablets, and HTML5, and lots of other technologies. And all of that doesn't really matter to us. Like our, our core um, purpose is to reach out to mobile phones, because we think that uh, the mobile phone is one of the best channels to consumers or to anyone today because we've got it with us all the time. So it doesn't really matter what platform. And so since then, we've worked with more than 100 uh, big bro global brands. And a lot of them have actually been foods and drinks samples. And that's uh, why I'm here today. So including um, things like yeah, Unilever, Cadbury's, and, and Bacardi, and Arla, and Barilla, and so on. And uh, so why? Why is this so interesting? So we, we actually did, uh, this is normally how we work with, with our clients. We look at where are the opportunities for mobile in the daily life of a, of a brand. So, uh, and this is actually an example that includes both, to make it a little bit more complicated, both restaurants and, uh, and food and retail. So first we're looking for inspiration. So that's the top thing up here. And that's looking for inspiration in cookbooks, magazines, TV, social networks, and from friends and family. And obviously, uh, at every single point here, you actually have your mobile phone with you. And it could be that you're watching television, and you see, um, you see something being cooked on, that, on television, and you actually take a photo of it, and it then recognizes and looks up uh, the same recipe somewhere else. Or you're taking a photo of it for some other reason, or you're hearing something. So it's, uh, and obviously, the mobile phone is great for inspiration, because you can put cookbooks on it as well. Uh, and then advertising, uh, so this can be you're, you're watching something on TV or you're reading about something in a magazine or you're watching YouTube and so on. And then it's about how can you use your mobile phone to then catch that experience and bring it on with you. So it can be that, um, yeah, once again, it can actually be insp for inspiration purposes. Then obviously online, you're sitting in front of your TV looking through recipes and, uh, and then you see your, the, you get the shopping list there which you then transfer over to your phone and that's what you bring with you when you go to the restaurant or you're reading about a new wine and you're looking for that in a restaurant and so on. Then outside of the store, so you might be that uh, you're standing outside of a restaurant looking at the menu and you want to learn more about it, or the menu is in a language that you don't understand, so you get it translated automatically as you're standing there, because I'm in China and can't understand Chinese characters or whatever uh, reason. It can also be that the restaurant is not open, so I want to find out when it is open and, uh, uh, and more about it. Or you just say, I want to book it, actually, and I'll show you an example of that as well. And then, uh, and then while you're in the restaurant, while you're in the restaurant in the store, it can be, um, for example, that you actually. So, it's quite. Diff maybe you actually want to find out more about the wine list in the restaurant, and you don't want to ask the ask the, the people that work there about it because they won't give you an impartial uh, answer. So, uh, or you or you're standing in the store and you want to compare the price of something, or you're standing in the store and you want to find out more about the product, so you just touch it with your phone and, it, and the information comes up there about the nutrition or what's in it and so on. Uh, and then you get to the cashier or you're get asking for the bill and you can pay with your mobile phone or you can sign up for a loyalty program or you can complain and say this wasn't a very good experience in the restaurant and you're afraid of telling the, the waiter that so you actually want to tell the owner instead. 
And then after the visit, uh, you're rating the restaurant, you're sharing information with your friends, uh, taking photos and about what you thought about it. And then finally, uh, at the restaurant, for example, w might want to remind you to come back again and they can, can give you a special offer or uh, they tell you about the new place that is launching and so on. So the whole point is that mobile is in so many different places in our lives. There can be hundreds and hundreds of use cases for uh, for a restaurant or for uh, someone that sells food or for a retail store. So some, some good examples of this actually, as it happens, so we started thinking about uh, being able to use mobile for brands uh, in 2005. And first we went out to about 50, 50 companies and said, isn't the mobile phone a perfect channel for marketing? And obviously all of them said, yes, no, they didn't. No one actually believed in it. They said they were just shaking their heads. They were like, why would anyone want something on a mobile phone for marketing? Uh, and the first, first one that actually said yes was a company called Arla in Sweden. So they do, uh, they're the biggest milk company, production company in Scandinavia. But they also do uh, Butter, uh, Lure Pack, which is really big in the UK, and lots of other brands. Uh, and they had a very popular online recipe guide. So we said we can take that to the mobile. And actually, when, do you need a, when, when is the time that you actually need inspiration and recipes? It's when you're standing in the store and you don't want to know what to cook for your friends or cook for your family or whatever. Uh, and you can make it randomized, you can look at a category. Uh, so we launched this actually in 2006, and during the first three years, 2006 to 2008, it was the most popular mobile application in the Nordic region, with over, I think it was over half a million users at the time, which was a lot. And obviously, as the phones were really small screens, so it's quite difficult to use, it was quite difficult to download, so to me that was a, um, uh, and it was a huge success. They actually marketed it. They put the, the information about how to download this on all the milk cartons. So I think four million people got exposed to it and were told that you can download this mobile application for free. And then behind all of this, they obviously promoted their own products. That was the purpose of it, but, but it became more of a service. And then obviously, since then, technology has evolved. So it looked on this little, little screen where it was really difficult to look, and today we have big screens on Android phones, or in the left-hand side, you have the iPad example, where you can do so much more. Uh, but, but the point is, you have to start small with everything, and we see that in a lot of technologies now. Even if it's only available for, uh, for a very, very small number of phones, it's still interesting to try out, because sooner or later, it will happen and become big. I was talking before about, uh, uh, about re booking restaurants, actually, on your mobile phone, and this, uh, this has, especially in the US, it's become an enormous uh, trend, actually. Open Table, which is uh, the biggest uh, online restaurant booking site in the US, have actually booked restaurant tables now for more than half a billion US dollars. I think they're reaching actually a billion US dollars by the end of this year. So, uh, so that's actually changing the whole way that we're booking, so people don't pick up the phone any longer and call. You look around you, you check, where is there available table for me and my friends right now uh, that has Chinese or that has Italian? Or you look up to your favorite restaurant and see when, when will I be able to get a table in the next three weeks for four people. So there's so many more ways of trying to find, uh, find out how these things work. And actually, it's more efficient for the restaurants as well. So I think uh, Arianne was talking about sustainability before. And the more, obviously, reservations a restaurant has before, the easier it is to plan the dishes and plan everything. So that's also uh, really good. And this is an example for, from actually the biggest online uh, restaurant booking site in Europe called Bookie Table. Uh, uh, then when we did the, the original recipe uh, site for Arla, uh, Absolute Vodka saw this and said, we want to do this with recipes instead. Because actually, uh, and this was also to make it more, instead of just making gin and tonic to your friends, or uh, maybe Bacardi with rum or whatever it is, uh, you actually, you could actually look at what recipes do I have at home, and, or what things do I have at home, and what can I make out of that. So it was more of an inspiration for people to make more fun recipes. Or you could stand in the bar, if you didn't know what you wanted to order, you clicked random, showed it to the bartender, and then you see what comes up from the bartender. <laughs> one, one point, actually, there was a test recipe. I showed this to the bartender, and the bartender looked at me and said, do you really want this? And I said, yes, bring it on. And he said, okay. And then he brings out three bottles of vodka in front of me, mixes it up, and says, this is what you ordered. Oh my God. And the drink was called Absolute Suicide. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, sometimes it gets exciting. And then uh, the other thing, obviously, is, is using mobile phone as a tool for cooking. So this is a very, very simple example, which is from Barilla. So when you cook your pasta, 
you put it on and it tells you after seven minutes or whatever. You can say before and if you want it al dente or how you want it and, uh, and that helps us out. And I think a lot of it, so it replaces a lot of the tools in the home. And this is obviously a very simple example, but it could do a lot of other things in that, this area. Um, and it can also be fun. So this happens to be a drink example, but it could also be with food. But uh, Malibu, uh, they, they suggest so their brand is all about fun Jamaican vibes and being on an island. So they, uh, we suggested that we should make uh, a bowling game where you bowl with coconuts and melons. So the coconuts wobble, so you actually use your phone like this, and then poof, and away you see the ball hitting the bottles, and then some fun characters. Uh, which reached about 15 million people over a two-year two -year period. And if you look at the cost of production, so this cost maybe 100,000 euros to make uh, across several platforms, but the total value of the advertising that they got was millions and millions of euros. So the, f the fun in, uh, in this obviously makes a... And then another example is Bacardi, but I think that's uh, very similar to Absolute Vodka. And this is a completely different example, actually, about using the mobile phone uh, for experience that are people talking. So um, Johnny Walker is all about, obviously, walking. So keep on walking is their advertising slogan. Uh, so they wanted to have people that talked about, walked around in cities and talked about the city. And at first, uh, the idea was that you would listen to this online. So you would sit in front of your PC or sit at home. But we said, actually, when, when would you want to listen to someone walking around the city? Actually, it should be when you're walking around the city. So you should be walking along the same road. So the idea was basically you get maps of uh, where these people are walking, which are celebrities, so Richard Branson and uh, some fam fam or famous people from uh, advertising in the UK. And then you could walk the same route as them and listen to their experience. And this could, all, could just as well have been about food or about something else. Uh, and uh, finally, an example, actually, we, did, we built a tool uh, which allowed people to create their own mobile cookbooks, actually, kept, uh, about a year ago, and generated over 100 recipes in, uh, in I think, was two months uh, with this. And here's an example with Italian recipes. It doesn't necessarily mean that it, they look the greatest, so it's not going to be as designed, maybe, that, unless the person that does it is a designer. But the interesting thing was that actually it allowed anybody to put, to put together a mobile application, whether that was a cookbook or a cocktail guide or so on. So it means that we're lowering, the, the technologies don't have huge barriers. You don't have to be a programmer to do this. You can actually uh, just be a creative person that wants to create something yourself. And actually each of these applications took maybe a day to create. So you had to do some graphics, you combined the information that you wanted to put in, and then at the end of it you pressed click and it clicked and it created the app. But uh, once you've done these applications, and this is some, something that we noticed with a lot of these, uh, um, uh, the brands that we worked with, they thought that uh, you do a great application, whether, whether that's with about Marilia, which is the, um, uh, measuring the time you cook your pasta, or if it's cookbooks, or if it's something about drinking. It's not enough any longer to just put it on an app store, because there's more than half a million applications that you compete with, so it's very competitive out there. So one of the key things is also thinking about how do you communicate this to people? How do you reach out? So one example was obviously putting it on the milk cartons. But another uh, cha like channel can be using the TV advertising. It can be uh, using display advertising, uh, so uh, banners through, for example, O2 or Telefonica, yeah, blogs and social networks. And viral, which is, I think, the way that everybody wants to succeed with viral. You want to do this fantastic application that everybody will talk about. And the natural thing first then was that everybody thought that the way that this would spread would be through SMS or email or sharing on Facebook. But actually what we realized was that it was all about the sharing experience together. So uh, the most important way of, of uh, distributing an application virally was getting people to talk about it. So it was getting like uh, these two people here. They're showing each other. So we actually noticed that uh, every person that downloaded the original Arla cookbook shared it with four, uh, four to five other people who then also looked to download it. And it wasn't through uh, necessarily technology. It was the inspiration of that. Uh, and to do all of that, you obviously has to, it has to be uh, things that encourage you to talk together and has to be useful and you want to share it. And it has to be very easy to share and meaningful to share. And, and thinking about all that. 
and it also has to be available on all of these technology platforms that I was talking like in the beginning. We shouldn't have to think about if people have an iPhone. I shouldn't have to think about whether uh, what phone Ariane has, for example, if I want to share something with her. It should just work when I send it on to her, when I show it to her. So it's very important that uh, it works across all the different platforms. Uh, then two, two last things uh, about more technology in food. So uh, near-field communication is an area that I know Telefonica is uh, spending a lot of uh, research time on. So this is the ability to use your phone and other technologies to uh, basically, for example, when I walk uh, into a restaurant, instead of checking in on Facebook, I just touch my phone to a tag on the wall, and then it automatically checks me in. Or another way could be that... Uh, I touch my phone on the menu in the restaurant, and it actually brings up the menu with a lot more information on the phone. So it could be that a restaurant doesn't even need to print the menu any longer, because actually you will get a new menu every day on it. Um, or it can be for getting discounts, or it can be payments when you get uh, to the cashier, or it can be that you touch a wine bottle and you find out more about where the wine comes from, how it's made, and all of that. Uh, so there's an enormous amount of things that you can do with these technologies. And I don't think we know today. Most of the discussions have been about payments. But I think we'll see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different use cases. And the more fun we do, do it, the more exciting it's going to be. Uh, and then hopefully, I've, actually Apple is one of the few companies that are not adapting this today. So I think once it becomes really fun, it will happen there as well. And then I will leave you with the most exciting thing, which is actually the smell of phone that Samsung presented about three or four years ago as, a, uh, as an idea. Um, and now I've, it's a German company, Convisual, uh, has actually manufactured a chip that has one, over 100 different scents. So the idea is that actually you can send scents back and forth between mobile phones. So instead of sending a, a dinner invitation to my friend, I will send the smell of barbecue. And then that person will maybe smell it and, ah, tastes good. I'm coming over. But obviously, it doesn't work if I'm having a cold. So that's the limitation of it. Uh, but I think, uh, and I think, once again, this is, this is obviously one small technology. Who knows if this is going to work? But the exciting thing is that we can put all of, these, and like, all of these amazing new things into the phone and create new experiences uh, of sharing. And, uh, and uh, it's very, very early days for mobile. <laughs> So I think that was that was the end. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? There's a question. Two questions. Hello, can you hear me? That was a very inspiring talk. Um, I was just wondered about you were talking about it's very early days, and there are you know many things that we might do. One of the current things that's become ubiquitous is the QR code, and we have them on our, our badges. And yet, it's very tricky to take a picture of a QR code, even with you know the, the numerous applications out there. And so, I'm, I'm just sort of wondering how you, you know, do you do any evaluation of what looks like a very promising um, application that might transform the way in which we we shop and, and so on. But actually, it, it's it's quite a fiddly um, operation yeah. to do. No, and I, I think some things are in transition. You have, to, you have to test things. Like QR codes works extremely well in Japan, and the reason for that is that it's integrated into every phone. So all you do is you turn on the camera, and then it automatically recognizes it. Okay. Whereas in the rest of the world, we haven't succeeded. We've failed with that. So it's actually too difficult. There's too many buttons. You have to download applications. It's really complex. But, it's, but the only way to, to at least get that trend started is that someone has to try to use it. And then over time, if people adapt it, then it will become the norm, it will become the standard. So we have, we have to accept that some technologies will be a little bit fiddly or difficult at first. And some won't ca catch on at all. It might be that we skip QR codes in, uh, in Europe, and it becomes an NFC becomes the next thing instead, because it's much easier. Uh, so there's no sure thing. You have to test lots and lots of different things, and, you have to, and then something might catch on. There was another question on the back. Uh, uh, hi. hi. Uh, I was wondering, maybe in the future, uh, cell phones will disappear. Now, nowadays, technology is becoming smaller. And now with, uh, with the iPhone, with Siri, now you get, you get to talk to, the, to, to, your, to your cell phone. So I was wondering, what is your vision for the future? Once, the, once cell phones disappear, once the technology is integrated into your body, uh, what, what's your backup plan for the future? <laughs> oh, wow. I, I try to think about what I'm going to do tomorrow. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, so I'm not. Uh, but 
I think, uh, yeah, as always, it's extremely difficult to, uh, to, uh, uh, to anticipate. And some, some things don't happen as fast as possible, or as fast as they could. So for example, I think five years ago, we were looking at um, these eyeglasses that you could put on and see things really big in front of you and transparency so you could walk, everybody would walk around and see maps. Around them. And tec technically, that's possible to do today. The technology is not that expensive, but still, people that don't really catch on on that. So I think we like toys, actually. We like the things around us. And the same thing actually goes for Sirius, uh, so the, um, the new Apple uh, iPhone technology in terms of voice recognition. I don't think they know if it's going to catch on either. It might be that the environments that we're in most of the time mean that it can't hear you, or you can't hear what it's talking back and saying to you. Uh, so once I, I, but of course things are going to get smaller. They're going to get more convenient. And um, uh, but with with phones, they're getting bigger at the moment. They're not getting smaller. So um. any other question? Uh, I actually have a question on the nightmare of developing multi-platform for mm. mobile phones. <laughs> so some of the like the game that you have shown, or some of the solutions that you have developed. How did you manage to do it multi-platform uh, when it had graphics and uh, maybe using the accelerometer on the phone? Like, how did you adjust that to say like a feature phone that yeah. doesn't have any of those uh, features? Yeah, so we <laughs> we spent uh, five five years trying to resolve all of that, and there isn't there is no easy solution. Yeah. It's actually um, the unfortunate thing. The, the I think the dream from people is that uh, HTML5 is the new buzzword in terms of resolving fragmentation and all of that. But actually, what we see is that uh, innovation comes a lot from proprietary technologies. So the new things, the fact that uh, Samsung comes up with a new operating system or someone else, that's actually what drives the technology innovation. So we just have to accept that it becomes a little bit more expensive, and you have to adapt to the different ones, and you have to have smart people that can do that. There's all, there's, but then you have commonality. So it's a question about trying to find the 50% that works across all of them, and then on top of that, you build the specific things that work for the individual platforms. But uh, that's an enormous challenge, and there's never going to be a solution to it. Okay. Thank you. Well, let's thank you all the speakers, please.